Please rise. And I will read the jury's decisions. For verdict form one, count one, aggravated murder, state of Ohio versus Erica Stefanko, we, the jury, being duly impaneled and sworn, find the defendant, Erica Stefanko, guilty of the offense of aggravated murder as charged in the indictment occurring on or about June 20th, 2012 through June 21st, 2012. And I do have 12 signatures. Uh, this says we do so on January 31st, 2024 with 12 members of our jury concurring. On count two, murder, we, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn, find the defendant, Erica Stefanko, guilty of the offense of murder in the commission of an offense as charged in the indictment occurring on or about June 20, 2012 through June 21, 2012. We do so on January 31st, 2024, with 12 members of our jury concurring. Counsel for the state, would you like the jury to be polled? No, no judge, thank you. Counsel for the defense? Yes, Your Honor, please. So I'm gonna go um, one by one and you just say yes or no. I'm just gonna identify you by uh, your number. Juror number one, was uh, your verdict guilty on both count one and count two? Juror number two, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Juror three, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror four, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes. Juror five, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror number six, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror number seven, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror number eight, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror number nine, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Juror number 10, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 11, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Your Honor. And juror 12, was your verdict guilty on both count one and two? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, I just wanted to express, uh, you may be seated. Go ahead. Before you release it, um, we probably should take a look at the jury verdict forms. Oh, sure. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> there you go. I see you're about to release them. I'm going to give them some instructions. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. while you look at that, I'll give some Thanks. instructions. Of course, um, just wanted to sincerely thank you for your public service, your civil service. This has been highly unusual. Um, you've been delayed, and we just greatly appreciate you have all done such an incredible job. You've come on time every single day. You've paid such attention. You've just impressed all of us, and we cannot thank you enough for your, your service and your duty to our county. Um, after you're discharged, you may discuss your verdict and your deliberations with others, but you're not required to do so. Uh, you must decide for yourself whether or not you'll discuss, discuss such matters. In any event, you should be careful what you say. You should make no statement verbal or in writing unless you are sure that it is complete and correct. You should make no statement that you would not be willing to make under oath in the presence of the court the other jurors, the litigants, and their respective counsel. Um, if your statements are to the press, please remember your name and your statement may appear in print, in which event you should be doubly cautious to be sure that your statement is absolutely correct in whole or in part, because the press will only use the part that the reporter considers sufficiently newsworthy or challenging. As jurors, you have served as public officers of the court, when you're discharged and I leave the bench, your services are completed and you have all the rights and privacy of private citizens. It is the lawyer's duty to protect those rights and your desire not to talk about the case if that is your decision. It is an improper and unethical for a lawyer or anyone else to harass, entice, or exert improper influence on you for the purpose of getting you to talk about the case. It is completely up to you. At this time, I'm going to have Adam take you back to the jury room. I do have some information I wanna to provide to you. Um, some tips for jurors who've served where maybe there's been images or testimony that's difficult. So I'll be back to visit you in just a couple of minutes, okay? Adam, if you could take him back to the jury room. All rise. Thank you. 
Erica Stefanko guilty on both counts of aggravated murder, okay, murder that she ahead. committed with prior calculation and design, and yes, another uh, count of murder, um, purposely like to causing to Ashley Biggs' death. Kimberly Biggs, the mother of Ashley Biggs, her reaction there in the courtroom says it all. Let's listen in. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, please be seated. I'm sorry. Thanks, Ed. <clears throat> what time did you say that? 1 p.m. Um, we reached out. We haven't heard back. Um, if we could just, I know you're going to talk to the jury. Maybe I can reach out and call. That'd be myself, perfect. And then double check that. But I think one way or the other, I think they're either going to be here or they're going to say do it without us. Okay, are they? But I want to make sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. So for now, the schedule will be sent set for tomorrow. Or the sentencing will be set for tomorrow, February first, at one p.m. Um, anything further from either side for the record? That works for us, Judge. Okay. Just wanted to say thank you to all our deputies, to Christy, um, and to the excellent counsel on both sides. Thank you all. A second verdict day for Eric's, Erica Stefanko, and a second time she hears guilty as charged inside of that courtroom for the death of Ashley Biggs. We have more on the other side of this quick break. Don't go anywhere. Mornings on Court TV. This is terrifying. Why didn't you help the police? I don't know if she's breathing. Every minute counts. Let's see if could we. One of the most successful true crime TV shows ever. I'm a decent guy. He deserves whatever he gets. Now has a new home on America's original true crime obsession. She was killed here? This is crazy. She didn't deserve that. 48 Hours on Court TV. Premieres Monday morning, 7, 6 central on Court TV. Welcome back to Court TV Live. We are covering the murder retrial for Erica Stefanko that has just ended with a guilty verdict. She was charged with aggravated murder and murder in the case of a mom, Ashley Biggs, who was tragically killed. Her mother, Kimberly Biggs, was inside of that courtroom where her prayers turned to praise. She was looking up and clearly overjoyed and emotional at the return of a verdict of guilty from this jury. This is the second time she's had to go through a murder trial over the death of her daughter, Ashley. And she is in the hallways of the courtroom right now giving her reaction to this news. Let's go in and listen. Um, I knew from the get-go, Detective Hitchens knew from the get-go. When I was at my daughter's grave, when they put her in the ground, he said, I'm never going to give up. Yeah. He never did, and I never would. And um, thank you to everyone that's been here for me, my support, my help, and my family, my friends. And I'm so sorry I had to put everybody through this. But Ashley needs to rest. Ashley needs to rest. I need to rest. I need to go on. And we got her. We got her. Thank you, Lord. Long process. Did you finally get this answer today? Yes, we did. The answer I was hoping for, and the answer I knew in my heart, because God will, God will prevail. Justice has prevailed, and my daughter can finally sleep. She won't hurt her no more. She won't hurt her no more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Ooh. Goodness me. Oh, Hi, y'all. Hey. Oh, oh, you got my money, right? Keep going. Here. Keep going? I said keep moving on. You got oh, I'm moving on. Yeah. It's time for me to be happy. Yeah, time to be happy. I need to move on. I need to move on. I need to have a life. I've never had a life. <laughs> never had a life. But I'm just so happy. What does this mean to the rest of your family? Okay. Oh, I'm sure. They're ecstatic. They're having a party. We're all going to have a party online. I don't care. We'll all come together. Our family will be together again. What little I have left. Thank you, Mike, for being there for me. You've always been there for me. You're my rock, and you you see me through this all, and uh, I can't thank you enough. I'm sorry. I'm crying. No, do not apologize. I'm just ecstatic. I just... 
answer that you were hoping for? The answer that I knew, I knew in my heart. I knew, I knew, I knew it was all going to come together. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, well, I will get some sleep. Oh, yeah, you need that sleep. Yeah. I don't know about the night terrors. They're not going to quit. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. Ashley will see me through this. She will. She's, she's with you. She can finally rest. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly Biggs there showing amazing strength, saying justice has prevailed in a case that has dragged on for so many years for that family. Let's bring into the conversation to react to this verdict and the emotion that is just overflowing there in the courtroom. Court TV anchor Judge Ashley Wilcott is with us and also joining us from New York, Marie Pereira, former prosecutor, trial attorney. Ashley, your thoughts on this verdict and this mother's pain just on display there inside of the courtroom. The mother's pain, like you said, she's been through this before. There was a conviction. She knew Erica Stefanko was in jail. Then she had this trial. I can't even imagine. And she said, hey, my daughter can finally sleep, can finally rest. So heart goes out to her. Let's talk about the conviction. I'm not too surprised. You and I talked about that. The first trial, there was a conviction. I think that the jury decided to believe Chad Cobb and not believe Erica Stefanko, that yes, I was involved in part of it, but not the murder. Clearly, they disagreed with that. And I think at the end of the day, this is what the jury does. They take it seriously. They deliberated for a very long time. They did, in fact, have questions to sift through all of the information. And they have found her guilty of murder and aggravated murder. This was such a horrific uh, way that Ashley Biggs was killed. Marie, I know you're certified in advising people on domestic violence and supporting those victims. This was a domestic violence case. This was a woman who had separated from Chad Cobb, but she still shared a child with him. And that seems to be the crux of everything that unfolded this tragedy. What are your thoughts as we see the end of this trial yet again? I think the juror at the end of the day did not believe her on the stand. And I think that that recording had a lot to do with it because her entire testimony and distancing herself from the conspiracy to commit that murder relied on that recording. If she didn't mention anything about wanting to plant drugs on her and if she didn't mention anything about it not being a plan to lure her to her death, and to her assassination, basically, then they wouldn't believe her because she didn't know she was being recorded. So at that time, she didn't know she had to lie and it didn't align. Her testimony did not align with what she said on that recording. That's why they asked about it. And even though they didn't give them the recording to bring to the jury room, they remembered what was said and it didn't align with the lie she told on the stand. And that's why they convicted her. It's clear that they found it important. Speaking of her testimony, yes. let's go back to a moment where she was giving an explanation as to really separate herself from Chad, talking about abuse. Let's listen. How would you describe Chad as like running the family? Um, he was in charge. Um, kind of like a general with his troops, I guess. Okay. Uh, he was very focused on discipline and he was violent. Okay. I don't want to get too much into it, but did, did he, was he abusive to the children? Yes. Okay. Was he abusive to you? Yes. That was her response to the dynamics there inside of that home. She was able to say that for herself this time around. Do you think that she should have taken the stand this time or does she not have a choice? You know, typically they say a defendant should not take the stand because they're subject to cross-examination and inconsistent statements can be used against them. I agree with Marie Pereira. I think that's what happened in this case. I do not think she should have taken the stand. I just think it opened up a can of worms that might have been unopened had she not been up there testifying. Well, now, second time around, a jury coming back with the same decision that another jury did previously. We will continue to follow if there are any updates coming out of that courtroom. That sentencing is being scheduled. It sounds like it's going to happen tomorrow at 1. We'll, we'll bring you the latest once that begins. We're going